Hi, I'm Tori Mystic, and you're listening to the Wear Wag Repeat Podcast, the only show dedicated to supporting women in all areas of the pet industry. If you were here last week for my solo episode, you heard my latest takeaways and advice on using chat GPT to strategically get more done. If you missed it, I encourage you to go back and listen to episode 268. Check out the show notes for the exact wording of the chat GPT prompt I recently used to get amazing results for my content planning. To sum it up in one sentence, ChatGPT is great for helping you with writing outlines, creating content calendars, or providing quick answers. But there is no replacement for actually writing the words in your business. So for today's episode, I have dug into my podcast archives and selected some of the best interviews I've done with women in the pet industry, focusing on the topics of branding, storytelling, and writing. These interviews serve as solid proof that copywriting truly matters. Whether it's a catchy brand name or a full-length blog post, using your own words makes a significant impact, and it really helps to attract the right audience. In this compilation, you'll hear from talented dog trainers, a dog YouTuber, and a cat blogger, each sharing their unique experiences and insights. And while I continue to rely on AI tools to assist with the grunt work, when it comes to the final words I publish online, I believe that they should come directly from me. If this is something that you struggle with, uh, putting the words together and making them sound how you want them to sound, and you want to dive deeper into the world of copywriting and learn how to make your website and your social media stand out by using the right words, well, I invite you to unlock instant access to my top copywriting expert, Angelica Ross, in Wear Wag Repeat Society. As our guest expert this month, Angelica is offering invaluable advice on finding the perfect words to catch your customer's eye online. And membership is currently open, so you can secure your spot and access this expert lesson and over 28 months of archived content. All the information you need can be found at wherewagrepeat.com slash society. Okay, now let's get into these clips for this episode. First up, I loved getting to know Gio and Taylor, the team behind Smart Bitch Dog Training in New Orleans. In this clip, they share valuable insights about how the words we use shape our pet brands, starting with the story behind their bold business name and how it ties into their overall brand strategy. They also discuss how their carefully crafted words and messaging enable them to educate dog owners and make a lasting impact in the world of R plus dog training. Gio and Taylor understand that the right words can make all the difference in capturing attention, building trust, and ultimately transforming the lives of pets and their owners. That's why we all do what we do, right? They've mastered the art of using their words and branding to stand out in a crowded market while also speaking directly to their target audience. Here's the clip from that episode. So let's just like dive in. I'm sure anyone who listened to our bio, they're not used to me calling someone a smart bitch. So... (laughs) Can you just go ahead and tell us why you came up with that name? Um, yeah, so Smart Bitch was born, um, you know, we we came from a, a, a daycare background. Our, our background was um, a little shaky, to be honest. Um, we didn't have the best experience coming up to become trainers. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change it too much for anything, you know, because I think it, it really made us who we are. Um, but it was born out of us wanting something that really identified with our personalities and the experiences that we'd been through. So, uh, smart bitch was born, you know, we wanted a, something quite literally, I remember a saying to Taylor, I want our business name to punch people in the face, (laughs) but in a good way. Um, and so, you know, and taking ownership of the word bitch, um, you know, a bitch is a female dog. Um, a lot of people 
don't use that word. Um, even though, you know, we're all in the doggy industry and I was just like, well, let's do it. Let's take it. Let's run with it. It was definitely a risk. Um, but it was a good risk. I'm, I'm very happy, uh, to be a smart bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And like, I'm, I'm obsessed with branding and like marketing and that kind of stuff. And I just think looking at all of your, your website and your social media, you guys kind of like embody your brand. Like, I don't know what came first, like the name or the personality, or maybe it was like both at the same time, but you know, how do you like to incorporate that into your marketing? So it kind of came at the same time. So the first thing that created our marketing that gave birth to our marketing was picking out colors. So we knew from the get go that we wanted black and pink. The funny thing about Gio and I is that we kind of operate on the same wavelength. So we both created smart bitch. We both knew that we wanted black and pink, particularly pink to be our brand colors. And then we said it out loud. I was like, oh, you two, you want pink? Okay, cool. We're now we're going to do pink. But as we started to create things in our image, we started to, okay, well, I like bricks. I love the idea of having our logo on a white brick background. So if you see our Instagram um, profile picture, there's a brick background that we love. Then I remember um, as we were creating our website, creating pages and creating um, info flyers, graphic info flyers, um, digital ones. I remember I was playing around this app and I'm like, oh, I love the idea of us having paint splatter because the smart bitch, we're kind of edgy, kind of hippie. So paint splatter here and there. So now on Instagram, you see a lot of our memes having paint splatter here, paint splatter there and things like that. So whenever we are, whenever we put something out in the world, I try to stay close to our branding colors. So the colors were also, can I have pink splatter somewhere? Can I have something digital? Because now we're doing online things. So you may see kind of matrixy ideas out there. So that's the whole thing. We want to kind of stay to the branding, but also still expand on that branding. So, yeah. And to uh, to further elaborate, I remember us having the conversations when we were talking about our branding that, um, you know, we are rewards-based trainers. We're R-plus all the way. And I think a lot of R-plus trainers get a bad rep because um, they come across as delicate or, um, as I like to say, uh, tree huggers who are hippies. And so we wanted a different approach. We wanted this kind of like rebel in your face. It almost, when you read the name, you would not expect the type of training that would come from us. So it's, it's, Hey, hi, look at us. Um, but also we're going to cuddle your dogs. So <laughs> that's kind of, well, yeah, kind of the your, idea. Your marketing is like in your face, but you guys obviously are very sweet people. <laughs> it's very <Yeah>. serious. <laughs> um, and I wonder like, that, as you were talking to you, it kind of made me wonder, you know, there are so many people out there and I see them all over Facebook groups who don't are who are not familiar with R plus training and positive reinforcement training. And um, it, it's kind of a challenge to convert them over, like, you know, those those old ways, like they're just old school ways. Like, I think sometimes those people don't mean badly, but they just don't know any better. Um, so have you found that like a lot of your clients, you've kind of like introduced them to a better way of working with their dogs? Um, yeah, we will definitely say, I think a lot of people reach out to us thinking that it's going to be the same ideology that they're used to. Um, and because we're aware of that, you know, given our branding, um, cause we, we are in, in a lot of competition surrounding us who do use the older methods. And so we wanted to be able to pull in that same client and the clientele and educate them on newer types. And so that's actually part of uh, what we do. All, all of our new or private clients, they all go through this process where we literally just, we call it the brain melt, where we teach them, this is the way of things. This is why, this is how. Essentially, uh, we teach them even, you know, down to, you know, some, some learning theory, just because we find that it's, it's really important in order to shape their minds to, to treat their dogs better and to be uh, more concerned about their dogs and to start there. So yeah, absolutely. We do, we get a lot of, um, converted people and we're very happy when they're, um, surprised by the results. I think that's probably, um, the most popular reaction is just the part like, wow, you guys really know what you're talking about. We're like, thanks. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well, you know, two girls actually know what they're talking about. <laughs> In this next clip, you'll hear from Sonia, the creative force behind Huskies in the Hatch. One important lesson she wants to share is the concept of embracing change and growth in our business. She points out that many petpreneurs and entrepreneurs in general get stuck in the first incarnation of their business, which can sometimes be frustrating. However, Sonia encourages us to understand that our journey in business and in life is ever evolving, and each new incarnation brings fresh opportunities. Sonia's journey includes a YouTube series where she poured her heart and soul into crafting scripts storyboards, and captivating captions that tell the story of her life with Huskies. Her dedication to authentic storytelling led to amazing outcomes, including landing a cover story in Modern Dog magazine. It's a reminder that when we let things happen naturally and put our authentic selves into our work, everything falls into place. Another valuable tip from Sonia is to pay attention to the questions people ask. These can serve as the inspiration for content and make content that truly resonates with your audience. Now, I must mention that this clip is just a glimpse of the full conversation with Sonia. To learn more about her story and get some more context to what we were talking about, I encourage you to listen to the complete episode. Of course, that link is in the notes for this episode. I think it would be really hard to tell a story about something that happened, you know, a couple of years ago um, and tell it in a nice way that flows and has videos. How do you do that? Uh, Well, I've had a lot of help. Like, I I don't want to make it sound like this is, I did it all myself. It's all been me. Um, I don't know if I knew. And this is the funny thing that happens is like, you know, in 2015, I tried to push all these things to happen. And I was like, I want to have this happen. I want to have that happen. And then subsequently they all didn't happen and I got sick. So it was like, so I want to, you know, I think my, if there's a lesson that can be learned from me, I was like listening to all of your other podcasts and I'm like, these people have such great lessons. And I was like, what am I going to teach people? And I'm like, nothing. And then I'm like, wait a second. I can teach people that, you know, because a lot of people are stuck in, you know, the first incarnation of whatever they're doing, like their Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or some sort of creative endeavor. And you're like pushing and you're like, this is never going to happen. And it feels really frustrating. And you, you start to get things not to go your way and you just get frustrated. And maybe you give up. Um, mine, I got sick. Um, but in this sort of next reincarnation of what we've been doing, I feel like like when something's meant for you, when things are the right timing, when you have all the skills and you've accumulated all these things that sort of, they almost propel you forward. It's almost like a conveyor belt without even meaning to. So if I tell you the process of like how this has come to be, you'd be like, what the heck? Cause I was like, I need to tell the story of my dogs. And I literally, it was like this abstract idea. And I knew I wanted friends from journalism school to do the, the trailer for me. So I was like, guys, how much is it going to cost? I need you to do this trailer for me. Um, Oh, you're over on the island. It's during COVID. Um, I'm going to come there. And they were like, okay. And they're like, well, we don't, we usually do wedding videos. I'm like, you're going to do a promo video for me. And they're like, okay. Um, And then they did it. And I don't even know that I had the whole season sort of sorted out. And this is what I mean about things just happening. And people, I showed the trailer to people and they're like, well, we have five questions why did you get so many dogs? <laughs> Tell me more about going across Canada. Tell me more about your illness. Um, what happened to Eve? Because it's sort of obscure in the trailer. And then what's going on now? So literally that people kept asking me those five questions. And I'm like, that sounds like five episodes to me. And I'm like, I'm going to make five episodes. And so I was like, here we go. Um, so it, it, it's almost like things have just been sort of happening and like snowballing because this is the correct time and this is the right story. And, and, and I'm not so frantic to make it happen. It's just sort of, you know, if nobody sees it and I get to tell the story of my dogs and, and, you know, I don't, I don't know if I live 50 years from now, that'd be really old, but you know, 30 years from now, um, I'm able to watch this and I get to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. 
that's it. It doesn't matter. So it sounds like just the universe like aligned and sometimes, you know, we can push so hard and it's good, to, I think, to be, work hard and push hard for certain periods of your life and in certain projects. But then sometimes you have to look and see like what what is coming to you with ease and what's just happening and meant to be and kind of go the easy the easy route. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy for you, but it's just the way that that has more ease to it, I guess. I don't I can't think of the right like synonym yeah. for that. I feel like people, and, and I would have too, like back in the, my earlier phase, I would have been like, what the hell are they talking about? Like, how do I, I'm supposed to work hard. I'm supposed to make this happen. But when something's meant to happen, it just, like, I can't even describe some of the the crazy things that have happened just by saying, I'm going to tell my story and I'm going to do it the way I want to in the way that feels authentic to me. And if everyone's like, but short form content, but this, but that. And I'm like, I'm going to tell these 14 minute long stories and I'm going to do it this way. And I'm going to sit on a couch and tell this story. And people are like, this isn't going to work. And I'm like, well, I'm doing it. Um, I like it though. Like I, I know we were talking about like long-term long form content versus like these 30 second videos. And I have to tell you, like, I really like some YouTube, like TV shows. Like I love the fact that we can all go out and create our own TV show and you don't have to get a contract with NBC or HBO or whatever. You can go out and make your own TV show if you want to. And that's what you've done. And, and so, so, so I know that like, it's good to just be happy for the sake of creating it. And in 30, 40, 50 years, when we're all like cryogenically frozen, we can watch it (laughs) and, and enjoy just watching it. But but I know that you must have some kind of like dream or expectation or aspiration for this. So like what what's next? Like what what do you hope to come from this YouTube series? Well, you know, what's funny is like I, I know you would think that. And, and of course, I'm like, I want it to be successful because and not successful in the sense of like there's necessarily a, a, a specific goal in mind successful in the sense that like, I'm almost, I, I called myself this the other day. Um, cause one of the things that happened just sort of like, you know, came to a head in the last couple of days, one of the sort of more positive things. And I'm like, I'm like, what are, what are they called? Where they're, um, like a pageant mom for my dogs. So my, one of the crazy things that happened, Chris was, Jenner, I think <laughs> I become Chris Jenner for my dogs. I'm like, as long as my children are successful and my children are for, for children, I, the, the only tie I really have to it is I want people to know their story, particularly because Eve is passed. And I feel like I want people to know Eve because she was just this amazing soul. And then I also know that people are going through these sort of phases with their dogs. And I want them to know that it's so important to sort of like, you know, if someone hugs their dog more that day or takes them for that extra walk after watching one of the videos, that's it. Like I'm good. Um, but I originally said, okay, I'm going to tell this story. And I, I, again, I didn't know what it was going to be. And then all my friends started helping and it's been amazing. Um, just the, the caliber of people that have helped me work on this project. Then I'm like, I'm going to write a book because I've always had this book idea in my head. And so I was like, even if this YouTube thing doesn't go well, but sort of what's happened out of this YouTube very quickly. Um, and I'd love to shout them out if that's okay. Yes. Um, two of the biggest Husky YouTubers sort of have taken me under their wing and mentored me. So, um, and given me advice and encouraged me. And I don't know if they know how much I'm, I'm going to cry again. Um, I'm like, there are, people are going to listen to this and be like this girl, like she's just crying constantly. <laughs> um, so Kiyush, the stunt dog and gone to the snow dogs, um, Jody and Jess from those respectively have both reached out and said, you know, I really like what you're doing. And I think that in the beginning stages, when you just sort of put your first video up into the world and to have someone of that stature, cause they both have over a million followers, Jody, almost 2 million at this point, right. um, subscribers. So I always like mix the terms for all of the social, like I'm like subscribers, followers, whatever. Um, yeah, to have that happen was, was amazing. And I think it just sort of gave me the the kick in the butt to keep going. Cause I think a lot of times, you know, you, you get your first thing out there and then you have a panic attack and you're like, Oh, I gotta, yeah, maybe I need to like wait a a year before I start, you know? So. Well, I think that's just, that's cool. Cause like you didn't reach out to them. They reached out 
to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. And And so it's just kind of, it's cool. Like you never know who's watching. And like as we're creating things and however you define success, like it doesn't really matter because like you don't know who's watching. Um, You know, it could be, you know, a huge account with 2 million subscribers who decides, you know, they love what you're doing. They want to support you in whatever way be your mentor, maybe, Um, you know, that's really cool. Or it could just be like one person who has a husky puppy and is ready to like pull their hair out (laughs) and, and and give the dog away to anyone who will take it. Don't do it. I promise. Maybe you've convinced them that it gets better, you know? So like, there's so many different ways to define success. And like, you just don't know who, who you're impacting. Totally. And I think that, you know, they're big names, but they're also, and you know what the funniest thing about it is, is like, obviously, and we talked about short form content and just sort of theirs is a little bit longer and they've really established good brands for their dogs in the sense that you really get to know them and their dogs. And it's to me, everything's about storytelling and, and of all of the Husky channels on YouTube, and there's a, a good amount that are like very popular. Those are the two I watched regularly. So for them, like literally both of the two accounts that I watch regularly to separately message me, I was like, like, what is going on? Like, I I can't even tell you how many weird, crazy things have happened. Like that happened. A friend messaged me one day and was like, um, I want to connect you with the the editor of modern dog. So that happened. And then just this week, I don't even think you glossed over that, but then that happened means that you got a cover story in modern dog magazine. (laughs) So I still... Like I just got it. And I know, you know, this, I just got the art, like finally, cause everyone's sending me pictures of it. And I don't know if it's because of where I was or, or how it was sent. Maybe my mail was slow, but like, I finally just got the article and I like, didn't, I don't think I really believed it till it got here. And then I'm like, looking at it, I'm like, it's real. Like, it's a real boy. Um, it's, it's so <laughs> funny because I, I like, can't, I still get to hear, like, I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is bizarre. Like, I can't believe this is happening. In the final segment for this episode, you'll hear from Paige Natto of the cat blog, Live Long and Posper. Paige talked with me about her journey of growing a cat blog and how she found success by answering real questions about simple topics that resonate with her audience. From topics like how to adopt a cat to addressing behavioral issues like scratching up the furniture. Paige realized that by providing straightforward answers to these everyday concerns, she could provide incredible value. What I love about Paige's approach is that she keeps it real and relatable. She started her blog by researching and writing about the questions that she received from fellow cat owners and cat parents. Her blog really took off, though, when she started sharing the authentic story and struggles of adopting a two-week-old bottle-fed kitten. It was with these blog posts, the ones that were about getting frustrated, crying in the middle of the night, and learning things the hard way, those were the posts that would become a massive hit. Paige also shares some valuable insights on SEO and blogging resources in this clip from her interview. It's important to remember that your audience is likely visiting multiple sites to research pet-related topics. That's why it is crucial to write your blog posts in your own words and share your authentic experiences to fill in the gaps of what other creators have already published. Just because a topic has been written about before doesn't mean that you can't write about it because when you use your own words, you will always put a fresh spin on it. Plus, this will help you establish a genuine connection with your readers and relate to their specific needs. Let's hear it from Paige. So did you, so you mentioned that you kind of got inspired because people were asking you so many questions about how to take care of their cats. Was there like a specific question that you got a million times or like a certain blog post that really um, a lot of- like went crazy at the beginning? Sorry. Um, yeah. So I feel like a lot of them were mainly like, you know, why is my cat doing this? Or like my cat's scratching like all of my furniture. What can I do? Um, and, you know, I was probably going through the same thing. Um, we've tried, we were trial and error with Phoebe, just like most people are with their firstborn child. Um, (laughs) 
So, you know, I tried a lot of things and then I also got a lot of questions of like, I want to adopt a cat, but I have no idea how to go, go about doing it. Like, what do I even do? How do I even get started? Um, and Phoebe was kind of thrown in to my life. My, my grandpa actually found her on his back porch and was like, someone needs to take this cat. So I took her. So it just kind of wasn't even a option of going into it easily. It was, I needed to get everything I needed, have a cat and learn how to take care of her. Um, but a lot of people have the option of, you know, doing their research and getting all the things they need beforehand and figuring out how to, you know, mesh them with their other dog, other cat or kids. So those were asked a lot by me. Yeah. People, it's amazing. People tend to ask like very ba- like we would think of them as being very basic questions, but people just really don't even know where to begin sometimes. And those can be really good high traffic blog posts. <laughs> right. Yeah. They still are some of my like most popular ones. And the other ones that are doing really well that I, you know, kind of like the ones that I think are really simple are like, can cats eat bacon? Can cats eat <laughs> like just a very basic, but a lot of people, you know, they're probably trying to feed their cat the foods that they're eating. And that's something that for the longest time I never thought like, oh, of course you can give cats bacon. Like, you know, but people are asking. So. Yeah. People are asking funny questions. So, um, so those kind of blog posts can be really good for traffic. Have you noticed, like, has there been anything else that you've noticed in the past year as your, as your traffic has kind of like exploded really? Um, what have been like the big things that have driven that? So there's been a couple things, you know, obviously I've done a lot of research when it comes to Pinterest and search engine optimization and you know, posts like that are going obviously going to do pretty well within search engines and get you some traffic. Um, the ironic thing was when I started my blog, you know, I tried to write a lot about the questions that I was getting from other people. Um, about six or seven months into blogging, um, we actually adopted a, uh, or we rescued a newborn kitten. Um, and she was only about a week old. And so we had to bottle feed her, take care of her from start to finish. And I kind of took a little hiatus on blogging until she got her forever home. Um, And after that, I, you know, just kind of took a step back and was like, I really want to write about this is something I really want to write about. People may not care, but I really want to write about how I cared for this two week, three week, four week and so on old kitten. Um, And actually that that exploded. And it was something I wasn't expecting. And so that's kind of one thing that I'm always shocked about is just because you think people don't want to hear it. That's not always the case. So you mentioned SEO. So like when you're usually writing blog posts, do you do like keyword research and figure out like what people might be searching for? And that kind of like dictates your traffic or your content a little bit? Yeah, sometimes. Um, I had a friend teach me. Uh, and I won't go into detail because I know she has a whole course on this li- on this strategy. Well, but, mention what's her what's her course in case uh, someone wants to do it. Um, so well, the two people that I have helped me so much with SEO. Um, one girl doesn't have her co- her a course, but her name is Katie Boykin. Um, highly recommend her for search engine. And then um, Debbie Gartner's uh, SEO books have been amazing. Um, and kind of the basic that one of the very like three hundred thousand feet things that they do is to look at your competitors what are your competitors doing well and is there a gap um and so you know i was kind of looking at some people that were doing really well on pet blogs and um you know if i saw that they were writing about something like can cats eat you know chicken you know there was i didn't see a whole lot of posts about bacon so i knew i could (laughs) probably rake pretty high for bacon which is a super simple way of doing it but you know kind of seeing what's what's even not out there yet, which I know that can be hard, but there's definitely stuff that people are having a hard time finding. Yeah. Well, and I think it's like uh, having a, an open mindset about it too. Like you said, you might see a post that said, can cats eat chicken? And you're like, well, they're already writing about that topic, but you have to kind of be open-minded and see like the little, the little holes that you can fill in, like can cats eat bacon? Right. Well, and then, you know, the other thing that I've seen on a lot of blog sites is like, um, you, everyone's going to have their own spin. And a lot of times people will go to two or three or even five different blog posts to get people, different people's opinion on it. Um, and so I knew that I could, even the ones that I knew my competitors had written about, 
I can write about it in a different way. Um, you know, my whole style of blogging is that I am basically a friend talking to you like I would be talking to my friends for advice. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of veterinarians that will give you the exact, like, breakdown of what goes into chicken and the protein of it. And, you know, that wasn't the style that I went for of with ba- like when like with bacon or with my newborn kittens was listen I I stayed up crying for two nights because I couldn't know I couldn't feed them you're not alone on this like I get it it's hard um, and I think that's something that I feel like a lot of new bloggers should not get discouraged on if they want to write about animals. And that wraps up another episode of the Wear Wag Repeat podcast. Today, we explored the importance of copywriting and the impact it has on our pet businesses. From Geo and Taylor, we learned the power of a bold and eye-catching brand name to capture attention and educate dog owners about R plus methods. Sonia showed us the value of letting things happen naturally in our content creation, while Paige reminded us of the authenticity and connection we can create with readers by using our own words to share our true experiences. Remember, whether it is a catchy brand name, a blog post, or a social media caption, the words we use can make a real impact and attract the right audience for our brands. If you want to dive deeper into the world of copywriting and learn how to make your website and your social media stand out with the right words, check out our guest expert, Angelica Ross, in Wear, Wag, Repeat Society this month. She's offering valuable advice on finding the perfect words to catch your customer's eye when they visit your website or first meet you anywhere online. Don't miss out on this expert lesson, and I also have over 28 months worth of archive content. You can get instant access to all of it when you join today at wearwagrepeat.com slash society. I am going to be locking down the signup page at the end of May, and it is going to be waitlist only until August. So just so that you know, if you want to get in on this, we have some great plans for the summer that you can read all about at wearwagrepeat.com slash society. I hope that you will consider joining us today and spending the summer working with this awesome group of petpreneurs. Tune in next week for a solo episode where I will share more behind the scenes info about how I'm growing my pet business online. I'll see you then. Some of the best conversations happen after the episode. Send me a note on Instagram at wearwagrepeat or find even more women petpreneurs to connect with in our private Facebook group called Wear Wag Repeat Labs. If you want to dig into more episodes, resources to grow your business, or find a link to something we discussed, it is all right there for you at wearwagrepeat.com. I'll see you back here next Wednesday for a fresh conversation.